Well, I always like uh, all my life said, you know, I hate sequels <laughs> and I'm still hating them. <laughs> um, it's a peculiar thing, you know, what happened, you know, I was like uh, doing 2012, first time actually working with a digital camera, uh, a lot of blue screen. And I said, oh my God, you know, can create like so many things now. And that time we had like kind of this uh, discussion about how do you do a, a earthquake in Los Angeles and... I sat pretty much in the computer, <laughs> and when I saw the result, that's the first time I said, oh my God, you know, now it's probably the moment, you know, to do a new Independence Day, because I always, like, kind of knew that when I did the original Independence Day, I felt uh, in, in, like, a little bit hampered by technology. I always had these, like, big images in my head, and, and at that time, you could only, like, it was, like, the first... Uh, a digital composites, but you couldn't do digitally anything yet. With every post-war generation, you know, there's like more normally like the rebuilding process. But what happens if in a post-war, uh, uh, like kind of, um, you know, like uh, civilization and culture, they know that the threat is coming back? which would like unify the earth, you know, would unify, there would be no like kind of Chinese or Americans or Germans or French, there would be only like humans. And all these humans would have to work together to kind of some sort of figure some ways out how to uh, oppose this like enemy, which they know will come back. They don't know when it's coming back, but they know it will come back. So uh, that's an interesting uh, scenario. The one problem what uh, they had or humans have, you know, is like kind of they cannot build it because it's grown. They have not the technology. So the whole world becomes a little bit Japanese, you know. They, <laughs> they're trying to kind of uh, harvest it and build new stuff out of it or, you know, in, in a way it's like cool because you, you, you like kind of uh, have this hybrid technology. Yes, it's very familiar because it's like built by humans, but the, the real engines are like kind of these anti-gravity engines uh, they're found in all these uh, thousands of like attackers. And, and they're like kind of used to, you know, in, uh, to rebuild and to kind of arm, you know, like kind of planet Earth. And the first one, this uh, kind of... Uh, great hybrid of science fiction and, and disaster. And when you like look at it, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, like uh, the last 20 years, uh, a lot of the superhero movie like used that element too, you know, aliens and disaster and destruction. And uh, in a weird way, you know, I think uh, Independence Day uh, invented it all. It's this kind of, uh, it's also like um, Independence Day and uh, this time again, it's a lot about pilot culture. It's about, you know, young pilots, you know, like knights uh, going, you know, like kind of storming the castle. It's very much like that. And, and uh, this time the castle is just, it's just much bigger. There's the old cast, you know, um, uh, mostly coming back. And there is the, the new kids, you know. It's, a, it's like a, a handoff from one older generation to, to the next. It's a little bit like me now. Uh, talking to kids, you know, I mean, I have like some people working who because of independence they're in this business, or, or, you know, like, and so it's like a lot of like responsibility, but it has like this, uh, you know, like Bill and Jeff, they become these old advisor characters, so very, uh, they become old advisor characters to a younger generation and tell them, you guys can do it, you know, if somebody can do it, you can do it, and it's a little bit like in the same way in the first film, you don't think we can make it. It's just like, that's the hardest thing to create, that you cannot any way come up with how we could beat them. David in the first movie was this big underachiever, you know? The guy who with like a, a you know, like a, a degree, you know, from a big university ends up like kind of running a cable station in New York, you know, it was like a, uh, divorced, you know, unhappy, you know, with an uh, overbearing father. And he's like became the director of uh, Earth Space Defense, you know, which is like kind of probably the biggest job you can have on, on Earth. And 
but he's uh, not quite uh, the right one for military. He's a little bit, you know, a, 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 you know, a guy who thinks too much, you know, and doesn't like to follow orders. <laughs> so in a way, that gets him in trouble. And uh, but because he is uh, that way, you know, he like kind of is very instrumental in figuring out how to beat them again. It's always like this uh, classic character, the fool and the crazy person, you know, in, uh, in, in classic drama, and that's what he is. He just went a little nuts, you know, because uh, the aliens are still in his head. Like a lot of other people who had physical or mental contact with them, they like kind of got changed by this experience and somewhat are connected to this huge hive mind. And uh, because of that, you know, he like has these reoccurring dreams and these reoccurring dreams, he knows they're coming back and he knows we're not going to beat them. He's a little bit, the, you know, there's always this, uh, I always like these uh, uh, characters. They, they're like kind of really good at what they do, but they are so strongly motivated, they go overboard. And like Jake uh, is like one of these characters, and it's a slightly crazy streak. He's crazy, you know, and but also very good at what he does, but it uh, got him in trouble. And so he's like kind of forcefully removed as a pilot and put on in one of these moon tugs, which are like more or less the forklift of that world, to kind of like transporting weapons to the moon <laughs> and really hates his life and his job and thinks like he belongs in a fighter jet. And he will end up in a fighter jet. I would like say it's like about the dream for me that the world is united. And we still face like an enemy we can nearly not like kind of beat, but uh, there's this indomitable human spirit which does it, you know, which uh, is a little bit like kind of I always say, you know, there is in something in us which uh, is so strong, you know, that even everything fails, you know, we still rise up and fight. Did you know that Eddie Redmayne attended Eton College where he had classes with Prince William? Eddie is also good friends with Benedict Cumberbatch. Both actors have portrayed Professor Hawking in different productions, Cumberbatch in Hawking and Redmayne in The Theory of Everything. Click here for more cool videos. Bye!